you know, with all the pain and suffering that is in our world today. And don't get me wrong, there are wonderful things in this world. The world's beautiful. God made it beautiful. There's so much to enjoy. But sometimes even when we fall prey to seeking just to enjoy, we encounter problems <laughs> that seem to want to steal or rob our joy away from us. I mean, can you not wait till a time when we have a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem, that holy city, that holy city that Abraham was looking forward to. Remember, Abraham didn't even live in a house. He lived in tents looking for that city that, whose builder and maker is God. Well, in Revelation chapter 21, we get a picture of that coming new city, along with a new earth and a new heaven. Awesome stuff. The new Jerusalem that's coming down, you know, from heaven there in verse 2. And verse 3 says, And I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Isn't that great? And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. I mean, it'll be amazing. It'll be, well, it'll be just like it was in the Garden of Eden before man fell, before man was seduced by the lies of Satan and believed the lies more than believing God, and of course lost that wonderful paradise where they lived. And there's a paradise coming, isn't that great? And God will wipe away, and this is this blesses my heart, God will wipe away their, their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no notice, no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And that's for ever and ever. There's not going to be evil in that place. There's not going to be Satan. There's not going to be hurt, no pain, no sorrow, no envy, no strife, no hatred, no murder. It's just going to be with God who is absolutely good all the time. His love will just be so intense and wonderful. His joy is peace upon us. We won't have any more of those painful things in our lives any longer. Looking forward to that. He's going to make all things new, it says in verse 5. He says in verse 6, it's done. It's going to be a done deal for us. Paid for completely by the blood of Christ. He says, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Whoever's thirsty, let him come and drink, Jesus tells us. And notice verse 7, he that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be their God, and he shall be my son or daughter. Isn't that wonderful? He that overcomes. What does it mean to overcome? That word in the Greek is Nike. Of course, famous shoes were made out. It means to conquer, it means to overcome. Who is it that overcomes? Well, John tells us in his epistle, 1 John chapter 5, verse 5, who is he that overcomes? Who is he that conquers? That conquers the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's, that's the entrance into that attitude and ability to overcome the world, the flesh, the devil. It is has to do with believing on Jesus Christ and be born again. That's the number one. That's the first step. If you're not born again, if you don't have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, if you don't know Jesus personally, then you first have to make that step. You have to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. You have to, as many as received him, you have to become the children of God, confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that first step to being a conqueror 
over the world, the flesh, and the devil. To be a conqueror over this world is to believe on Jesus Christ. And then, and, and I want you to point, want to point out that being that overcomer is a wonderful thing. Paul told us that in all these things, we are more than conquerors in him that loved us. We are, and, and that word is amazing because it means Hooper Nike. It means even not just a conqueror, but we're, we're over conquerors or over victorious, if you will. The only way we can do that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Those that have received the blood of Christ to wash away their sins and trust in God. All these things are more than conquerors. Romans 8.37, for I am persuaded, notice that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Do you realize, Christian, that we can live as conquerors in this life, on this planet, even though we're going to be tempted, even though we may fail from time to time with the world, the flesh, the devil, the lust, getting angry. There's going to, we're going to fail, but here's the thing. In Christ, with the power of Jesus in us and upon us, we are more than conquerors. And nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And then we... And then getting back to Revelation, we realize there's going to be a time when there won't be any more struggle. By the way, if you're struggling today, you know, doing the things you don't want to do, and, and, and at times you experience victory walking with Jesus, but other times you don't, hey, there's a struggle there that means that the Holy Spirit in your life is there. That means Christ is in you. If, if there was no struggle, then you wouldn't care. Wonderful thing. The Holy Spirit, as Paul said in Ephesians, seals us unto the day of redemption. He's always with us and he'll never leave us or forsake us. But there's going to be a time, as we saw in Revelation 21, he that overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be their God and he will be my child. Oh, can't wait for that. How about you? No more death, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain. The former things have passed away, and we are in heaven with the Lord. We are in that city that Abraham looks forward to. God bless you as you surrender daily your life to Jesus. Let him be the captain of your heart. Let him guide you. That's that is so much easier when we do that. That's when we experience that victory, that Hooper Nike, that overcoming of this world, flesh and devil. God bless you in Jesus' precious name.